And then, of course, Danny Blanchflower, who talked a good game as well, didn't he, Gordon? Oh, yes, uh, yes, Danny was a great character. I can remember when he first came here, uh, uh, Angus Seed says, well, I thought I could talk, but he said, I think I've met by a match here. And I can always remember Jackie, his brother, Jackie Blanchflower, saying, now, oh, Danny, he didn't kiss the Blanny, so only swallowed it. <laughs> That's a fair build-up, Danny, isn't yeah, it? I right. think you still talk a fair game. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I'm mm -hmm. delighted, by the way, to see you've uh, come in your yes, my red socks, socks today. Yes, you've got right. them specially on for the yeah, occasion. That's right, yeah. Now, what about this chap? Sk Actually, is it Sid or Skidder? Which do you prefer, Sid? Either. It doesn't matter to me. He's Skinner to me. He was the first character that I made contact with at Barnsley. Uh, the first practice match on a Tuesday morning on the old ground, and, and, and I'm playing, and here comes Skinner towards me. And I'm thinking, now, uh, is he going to go right or left? And he goes straight on, right over me. <laughs> <laughs> and I th so that was a fair assessment. The great you thing about Skinner, the off the field you couldn't meet a nicer fella, gentle, friendly, but on the field, uh, tough and, and not dirty. Funnily tough. enough, they say that's about Norman Hunter, who of course is the manager of Barnsley today, don't they? A similar type, would you have said? Yes, uh, well, uh, no, I think they're slightly different in character, yes. Mm -hmm. I think they're slightly different in character. I think Norman, you see, Norman always wanted to be a skillful player didn't he? he told me that once he he his dream was to be an attacking player actually rather than a defensive one that's what sid was that a fair comment that uh, we made which said you've become far more famous since you finished playing well yes uh, it does really uh, michael parkinson made that uh, come true for me but uh, i mean it uh, it doesn't alter my, me at all you know in any shape or form uh, how long is it since you've seen one another by the way oh a long uh, time Seven, th seven years yeah, it must be that. I think what Parky was reflecting was the character in the game in those days, you know, and that 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 Skinner's character was 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 different from from the others on the team, and 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 I think that football should be a variety of characters. It's a great democracy where all sorts of people should come in. Slightly different from from political democracy in the fact that you've got to be good enough, you've got to show you're good enough to get into the team, then you get the vote, you know. The other way you can vote for people you don't know. Sid, would you agree with me that perhaps the characters have gone out of the game at the moment? They don't seem to be those sort of players like yourself who were around in the 40s and 50s. Well, no, I, th I think that's all been brought about by this uh, coaching, Mark. It's, uh, to me, you know, coaching, it's, uh, it's not, a, it, well, it's not, not in the game for me. If a person's got the ability to play football, he'll play football the way he's taught himself, not what somebody else t tries to teach him. Mm. You know, it's, uh, it's all, all wrong. Did that evoke many memories for you when you saw people like Johnny Steele and Gordon Pallister and Johnny Kelly and oh, yes. Tommy Taylor? Yes, uh, yeah, Tommy Taylor there, great. Same as what Gordon says and Johnny Steele. It would, it would have been, you know, the record uh, centre forward for international caps. No doubt about it. It was brilliant. Danny, when you look back, I mean, you had mm -hmm. great times with Aston Villa and Tottenham Hotspur, but what are your fondest memories of a couple of years at Oakwell? Oh, I think that I think that probably the, my time at Barnsley was the most important step in my career because Angus, I was playing in Glen Torn and Irish football, and, and and a lot of managers were looking at me but thinking I was too frail and things like that to play. Angus was the one that gave me the chance, you see. And when I came to Barnsley, uh, it was it was I had been in Canada doing Air Force training and all that before that, and when I came to Barnsley, it, it put my feet on the ground. I. I the people in Barnsley were great people, and, and they're nearer to reality than everybody else. And, and the, the, the town was full of character and people, people with character, uh, who, had, who hadn't got a great deal of money. And, and I think that adversity is the breeder of, of the best kind of character. And so I learned, I was lucky, that was the first step for me. You see, it could have been the last one, I would have been too old to learn. But it was the first step on a, on a very important trail. Actually, you mentioned character. Just looking at some of the faces behind you here on the wall. I mean, yes. Sid, you're a Barnsley man, and they have got real character in every one of those yes, faces. Every one of them, yes. Yes, it's true. Cloth cap, uh, dull bowler, even the uh, youngster in arms there. You but, know, I mean, y you don't get that today at all. But what is different about the, the tyke, the man who comes from Barnsley, as opposed to, say, the man from Sheffield or the man from Huddersfield? Well, I think it's uh, really with it being a mining town. You know, you've got the... Uh, and there's characters down the down the pit, you know. Well, they all come to the football matches, and this is where, where you've got your character from from the mines mostly, mm -hmm. you know. It's, uh, and it, uh, I used to work down the mine as well, so I mean, I, I'm a character in in my own, you know, in my own right sort of thing. I'm sure you, know, you are. <laughs> yeah. Football's about people, isn't it? It's not about winning and losing. It's about taking part in people, and uh, and and the conflict of characters and things like that. Mm -hmm. 
That's really what it's about. Okay, well, we'll leave it there for a moment, uh, Danny said, and uh, because any peep into the past really will show that Barnsley's greatest hours came in the years prior to the First World War. As a second division or second league side as it was then, they twice reached the cup final. In 1910, they met Newcastle United at Crystal Palace with a team of midgets by modern day standards. Goalkeeper Fred Means was the giant of the side at five feet nine and a half. The rest varied between five feet five and five feet seven. Well, Newcastle proved too big for them in a replay at Everton's Goodison Park. Believe it or not, we found a Barnsley man who was at the 1910 Cup final, and what's more, he still toddles down to the ground to support his club, John Willie Sheard. When was the first time you came to Oakwell? Well, I should think coming about nine. Well, Alf West were playing when I was coming down. What was that, about 1904, it, it, wasn't when it? When they transferred him to, to Liverpool. Was he one of the best? He was one of the best, yes. Who were the best players you've, you've seen here? Well, I've seen Alf West, Dickie Downs. Tommy Boyle, Frank Barson, Silto, Blanche Flower, George Wall. You have a good memory, haven't you? Uh, George Duncan. Yeah. And how, how does this team at the moment compare with those teams that you've seen all through those years? Well, it's a very good team, this. One of the best, I think. Do you still shout at them? No, I just, you know, I'm, I don't get too excited about my age. Oh, I, no. I don't get too excited. Now, did you go to the cup finals? Because, of course, Barnsley went into the cup final in 1910 and again in 1912. Were you there? No, I didn't go. I went to replay when they played Ever uh, Newcastle at Everton. And we lost. I think we're 3 1. I think you still think they should have won, don't you? They should have won at Palace. Yeah. I couldn't have a paper report because it was a local referee. <laughs> it was it was it was in the Dodgers. Right. It should have been. And we drew with it. There's one incredible thing to me, and that is that we've just taken you into the boardroom here at Oakwell. You've been inside there, and you've met Norman Hunter, the manager. It's the first time you've ever been in, inside the in ground. down isn't there. Yeah. And yet you live in the street just outside yeah. the ground. Aye, I've never, I've never been inside there. But it's just like walking to my own house. The disappointment of defeat in 1910 disappeared two years later when Barnsley, with six survivors of the first final, Glendinning, Downs, Utley, Bartrop, Lillicrop and Tufnell, went all the way again. This time, a Tufnell goal against West Brom brought the FA Cup to Barnsley, the only club, incidentally, to win the Cup in Yorkshire. That magic moment came in a replay at Bramall Lane. Enter a man who can actually say, I was there. Oh, well Wilf done. Wilf Baxter, you're as fit as a flea, aren't you? I am. You know, well, it's a better I get. <laughs> I'm sure it's hard for us youngins to imagine, you know, that you were at the Cup final, what, 70 years ago now. What do you remember of that 1912 final? It was very busy coming home because we were staying to London. <laughs> of course, you went down to Crystal Palace, didn't you? Tell yes. us about the trip. Well, How much did it cost you? Oh, it was very little. It was very little. Six shilling. Did you have a good view of the game? No, I up a tree. Up a, what were you doing up a tree? In the one room. It was a small place. There'd only one stand. And who was in there? Well, Prince of Wales, I expect, you know, he wasn't a king or all like that. So it was a nil-nil draw at Crystal Palace, nil, uh, nil and, and then they came back to Bramall Lane. What do oh, you no, remember no. of the replay? It was one apiece, One apiece, one ah. apiece. What do you remember of the replay? Oh, it was a good match, good match. He could have tipped us up, Pennington, who played for England, you know, Pennington. He could have tipped our man up, but he I think it was Tufton who scored, wasn't it? Tufton. Uh, that would of course, today, when a team wins the cup, just about everybody in the town turns out the following day to welcome the heroes home. What happened uh, in 1912 when Barnsley came home? They brought him down Shefford Road, and a public horse called the Clarence. They took the cup on the Clarence balcony, balcony at Clarence, and the cup were all there for us to see. And I took my missus to shoved us down what they call Wesley Street, aside at Lambra. There's a Lambra there now, and they call it Wesley Street. So you can guess what it was. We were shoved down there, but I 